Cool. So, welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope you'll bear with us due to some uh, reshoveling. This uh, just while we're doing the workshop, Orta will still be working on some slides. So um, on the fly. Yeah, taking live uh, live presentations to the max, <laughs> writing slides while the presentation is in progress. Um, okay, so today, well, right now, we'll talk about Relay um, that you may have heard about. So Relay is um, Relay is a an API client. I just call it like that. Um, and so, why would we want to have an API client in our uh, applications at all? Well, um, networking code can be can seem easy. But then, at some point, you need to deal with um, various forms of authentication, various forms of caching. You want to handle errors in a single place. Errors can be network errors. They can be protocol errors. They can be application errors. So very quickly, it's no longer fetch, right? Um, so that is usually why you would like an API client in your application code. You just want to. You want to have all that stuff abstracted away and dealt with. <coughs> uh, Relay is, they call it, a framework for data-driven React apps. Um, it is by Facebook, like React. And its, it's few bullet points are, it is declarative, just like React is. So you declare the data your components need with GraphQL, and then Relay determines how and when to fetch your data. So that means in your component file, you just think about what. I think I'll do it off. Okay. Um. Okay. Right. So in your component file, you just look at your React component and think like, this is the data that this component needs. Uh, that is what you think about. You do not think about networking. Uh, you do not think about data for other components, just that component. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so, okay, so declarative is just, you state just what data you need. Is that going on your screen? I don't know. Oh, yeah, and so co-location, the GraphQL is written next to the views that rely on them. Relay aggregates queries, fragments, into single queries, and uh, makes efficient, efficient network requests. Mutations, um, with Relay, you can write GraphQL mutations, and Relay, so Relay has a runtime store where all the data is denormalized into, meaning that if you uh, perform mutations and you update some data that other uh, components that are being displayed rely on, that will automatically re-render those components and you'll have consistency across your views. And then safety, um, they don't list this out right now, but um, you may have heard of Relay Classic versus Relay Modern. Relay Modern is basically a reboot, that's just Relay. Um, maybe it's, okay, so let, me, let me, a little bit of history, Facebook, has um, worked on GraphQL internally for a long time. And they, as a, to use that, their GraphQL service, they built a client that they called Relay. Uh, Relay did a whole bunch of other things. It started out actually as a sort of React router type of thing. Um, and Relay Classic did all sorts of smart things at runtime, but that was mainly because they were focused very heavily on iOS and iOS devices are generally pretty performant. But when they started moving to Android, they figured like, actually we wanna get rid of all of the runtime stuff because a lot of our uses on Android devices have very uh, poor Android uh, devices. And so they wanted to move everything to compile time and that offers some more benefits. So nowadays, the Relay compiler uses your GraphQL schema, which has, a, has all of its types uh, expressed so that at compile time, we can ensure that the data that you're using matches the actual schema of your GraphQL service. So just like with TypeScript, it just offers a little bit more uh, upfront knowledge about the code is being correct. All right. 
Yeah, so I think that is enough for us to actually just start writing some code and then continue on. <laughs> Unless there is some immediate questions. Can I have a question? Go. Uh, so I get the advantage of having a network client. Um, can you talk about like why they chose to make it be a component? Like why why not just have a network client that's a JavaScript object that you can interact with? Why 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 make it be a React component? Well, so if it's if it's just a JavaScript object, then it would probably be imperative code uh, as opposed to declarative, which is the whole point of React and uh, integrating well with React. So in your React components, you just, you're thinking about uh, to present your view. And for to present your view, you just want to state, this is the data I need. Uh, you don't want to be dealing with like, oh, we're going to make a request now. Now we need to store like some in progress uh, data somewhere and then maybe handle, you get back to imperative code. You can, if you really need to do that under the hood, because under the hood, all the code is imperative. But um, in principle, that is the design that they set out. Okay, so um, has everybody followed the setup steps from the readme? If not, let me just pull it up quickly. Uh, so this time we will have to use Yarn, the alternative NPM client. I think we managed to get pretty far without needing Yarn. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Cool. You don't have to explain now, but when you get to it, can you tell us why we need to use Yarn so far? Yeah, we can do that now. Um, that's because because we use a we have a maintain a fork of relay that has PRs uh, that are works in progress or set are open and being reviewed. We actually want to use them, and Yarn offers the possibility to um, to, to say during uh, dependency resolution wherever. For instance, relay runtime is being required by another package, override it with this very specific one, which is our fork. So that we don't end up with a situation where transitive dependencies actually use a different relay runtime than the one we wanted to be using. I see. So at the end, you can point to a fork, but not like that fork might not necessarily be used. Like, yeah, we to the tree. Yes. Yeah. That's a yarn only feature. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Um, the aim is it's it's so the the application the start application is largely uh, where we left off again with the uh, React application. Um, so we have a JSON file that we pull in with some data about artists. Um, this one is a TypeScript version of that application. So it's roughly where we left off. We also tried to replace uh, the CSS with styled components. Um, that has not been done everywhere, so it's mainly here the artist item. So you might, so you, here you see the sub components that John and Rube covered. Um, yeah, so right now, if you would start this application, let's <coughs> in, that, the, in the RC relay start directory, you can run yarn start, and that should give us. This application. So if you're looking at the folder structure, this one's a little bit different than the previous ones. Uh, we ejected from create React app. So instead of like sort of encapsulated complexity being hidden from you, it's now exposed to you. That's why there's tons of like other files in there that previously lost the style components one. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. So the goal is to replace the data loading from a static local file to uh, fetching it from metaphysics, our GraphQL service. And I am just going to have these notes here. So the first thing that we, in this case, we're just, we're not going to do it too iteratively because we also don't have that much time. It's probably gonna take a little, a little while. So I will just show you uh, in this same readme, we basically list, the declarative parts of the, of the whole exercise. Um, so, rather than if you're, you might be used to having 
if you're used to using GraphQL already, then you might be used to having a query and then all of the data in there. And if you're used to this in force, for instance, that is usually what is done. There's, there's, there, may be, there may be fragments, they may be split into different files, but the setup is generally there is one place where all of the query lives. Here we are, we are splitting the Oh, I'm, I'm trying we to are splitting uh, the query up um, amongst the, the components that need that data. So the popular artists, uh, well, let's start at the, the root one. Oh, yeah. So the application needs to provide an entry point into the graph, which in this case is going to be the root field that is the popular artist root field. And further than that, the, that the, the root component does not know or care about what the exact data is that is needed by the rest of the graph. It just pulls in the first uh, fragment, which is this fragment, um, which is in the popular artist component. The popular artist component really only cares about the list of artists, and then for its child components, it spreads in the fragment of the, the child component. And then in the artist item uh, component, this is the data that the component actually needs. And so that's only listed there. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's so just you can just copy paste when we get to what queries you can just copy paste them from there. Um, let's start by. Or shall we start from the root? Let's do that. Okay. Um, and in the root one, I don't think we should. You don't have to follow typing. I think you should just copy that aspect from the same file in the finished directory. So that's the artsy, let me just open that as well. So it's not, that's not too interesting. Uh, let's see, so here we have <coughs> finished app file and you can just select all of that and copy it over into this file. All right, there is going to be an error. That is fine for now. I'm just gonna gloss over that. Then the next part is, okay, so, so now we are in, in this app, in this root level uh, app component, we are rendering um, eventually, we are rendering the popular artist component. And what happens, so basically what the pattern is that you, the same way you build up your React tree is how you build up your relay tree. So if you are, if your component renders a popular artist component, the fragment belonging to your component is going to have a popular artist fragment. Okay. So that, that pattern always follows uh, the tree. Um, if we, so if we go down the next components to popular artists, you will, again, this one relies just on JSON. So let's start making this into an actual uh, relay component. So let's see, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna cheat this time. So just follow along, I'll try to be slow. So we're gonna import um, this is TypeScript, so what I like to do is I do import curly braces and then the thing we're going to be importing from, which is React Relay. I'm even lazier, you could just type the actual thing on the spot and it'll auto complete, it'll auto add it. Fair, okay. Um, what we are going to be using is the function create fragment container. And we will need the GraphQL function. Okay, so what we're going to be changing is the, the, the component that is exported. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap our actual component inside a relay component. So it's basically the same pattern as with styled components, uh, any React uh, component, everything is about composition. So your component wraps components, wraps components. We use the create a fragment container function, then you get a whole bunch of helpful explanation that just, just follow what I do. 
Um, the first uh, parameter is the actual component that you want to wrap. So that is going to be the popular artists one. The, go away. The next one is going to be the fragment for which we use the GraphQL function with what we call a template string. So that's backticks. And so here we use uh, GraphQL syntax. So we want to define a fragment and then we are going, we need to give that a name. And the pattern we're going to use for that is just to first use the name of the, the module. So that's the file. And then the name of the, the prop that we want to receive in our uh, component. And that's just going to be popular artists. So it's not, not, not the most pretty name, but I mean, that's a convention. And let's just follow that. Because fragments live in a global namespace. So you need to have some sort of convention to make sure that they don't clash. Is that like a requirement for it to work or is that just a like developer? It is, it is a convention to make sure that you don't get into the situation where it clashes. So they hard coded it into this. It's a requirement, but it's to make sure that you don't run into clashes. But like, relay won't work if you... Relay the compiler is just going to complain. It's, and it's going to say, you should name it like this. This is really good when I first blocked this out because I keep forgetting about that rule. I just gave it whatever name I wanted and then the relay compiler was like, nope, nope, nope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess, can we show it on uh, already? See if, it, if it's being helpful? Uh, what, the what? The compiler. <laughs> sure. Let's see if it starts to be helpful. Uh, Going to use the integrated terminal for that so that we get to see it. Below, um, what should we do? Yeah, rather use the right. Okay, okay. Um, if you use the yarn relay script, it will start off the compiler uh, in watch mode, so it will keep running. And let's see, so it's now complaining that there is a syntax error in our GraphQL fragment. Um, expected on, found, and the file. Yeah, so the fragment, so GraphQL syntax, if you're defining fragment is fragment, the name of the fragment, and then on which type, you, which, on which type you want to be operating. In this case, our schema, if you want to have a quick look, this is a full version of the schema of metaphysics, has a type called popular artists. And if you look at the, what do we call it, root query? Uh, no, this query probably. <laughs> yeah. This is the type query is the root of the to hold the entry points into the graph, and that one will have a. Uh, let's see. There is a popular artists. Uh, oh. oh, there it is. There's a popular artist root field, which returns which is of type popular artists, and right? so that is what we are going to be querying on. So that's what it should look like. And then in between these uh, brackets, we're going to define the data that we actually want. In this case, let's take a look at our React components. What data do we need? We, it's a bit big. We really only need the list of artists and in here we are also using for each artist we're pulling out the id and using that as a key for react uh, if you remember we need a key uh, in lists of react components to make sure that react knows how to recognize them when updating so that's those are the two things we need so first of all we are going to say that on the popular artist type we need to query the artists field, which is going to be a list of artists. And then for each artist, we want the ID. Uh, and then basically we forward the artists to the next component. So we don't, we don't actually need anything further from the individual artists. We just want the, that component is using the individual artist data. So we will be spreading in the requirements of this component. We will do that yeah, 
we'll do that once we've defined it and given it, given it a name. But is this is this is this this concept clear? Like how we've defined this fragment uh, based on the the data requirements of the component? Yeah, if you knew the fragments, they're a little bit tricky, but they just say like anytime you see this type, I want this extra bit of data attached to it. <coughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to open up the artist item component and here we're going to import the same stuff. So import uh, from React Relay the fragment, creates fragment container and the GraphQL function. And then again, we're going to export that fragment container which is going to wrap our artist item component and we use the graphql function to define the fragment and that one is going to be called let's see if it's going to be helpful here in terms of the name So this fragment should be called, I'm going to call it differently just to show the error. So fragments and then on. So this, so what type is this on? Right. This, is, this, is, this component only cares about an individual artist. So that's, that's what we're going to be querying on. And uh, of the artist, let's see, there is, so here we have interfaces that define the data that is being used by the component and that mimics the data that is in the JSON file. So for now, we can use this as a way to know what we want to be querying on. So we need, from the artist, we need a name, we need the href, we need an image URL, and we need the bio. So those are the things we're going to be adding here. So name, uh, href. Image image from the image we want the url and a bio all right now let's see if i save this okay so now the relay compiler is saying parse error fragment names in graphql tags must be prefixed with the module name got to do in module uh, artist item in artist item tsx so they could have maybe literally suggested to call it artist item so that but that's what it wants right and then uh, seeing as we this this data is a single artist um, in the component I think we also do it right now yeah so the, the component has one prop which is the artist data so that's also what we are going to call this fragment um, and that is how relay will then call the prop by the way if you find if you absolutely do not like any conventional magic then you can also do something like this and that is the same then relay would use this name as the prop but it, it by general the convention is just to use the name and it will inflect the, the prop name from the last the last part all right cool so let's see um so going back to the popular artists uh, component, we now have a name of the of the fragment that belongs to this component that we are using here. So we're just going to put that name in place there, and that should be it. And if you have been running Yarn Relay, um, maybe because of the way we have been faffing, it might have been. Uh, gotten into an uh, erroneous state and we just kill it and restart it but it should should look like this so it's created uh, an app query dot graphql ts file somewhere and the same for these other fragments is that everybody on that page cool okay um let's see so conceptually we have now a a react tree that is a, 
a root application component. We have in that application, we have a popular artist component, which is represents the list. And then in the list, we have the individual artist items. And the queries for it follow the exact same pattern. So here we, we, we only provide the entry point for the application. Here we query the list of artists. And here we query the data for the individual artists. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at, um, so what Facebook has, like I said, during the TypeScript works, workshop, their own uh, type system on top of JavaScript called Flow, which we do not use. So we have uh, part of our fork and one of the open PRs is support for Relay to, uh, to have uh, language plugins and the language plugin that we then wrote is a TypeScript one. What, it, what that means is that these files, they are all being stored in, in source generated. If we take a look at, let's take a look at the first one. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you don't really need to care about right now. This is basically the AST of uh, the queries so that at runtime Relay can as fast as possible generate the actual query that needs to be sent to the server without needing to parse everything first again. But for our purpose right now, the interesting part is that the Relay compiler is going to uh, emit types, which as we also discussed during the workshop is basically the same as an interface for an object. And those types uh, contain exactly what we queried in that fragment based on the schema of the service. So it turns out that if we take a look at, uh, let's see, at our schema, so popular artists here, yeah. So this, this field is typed as returning the type popular artists, but it is not typed as in this way, as guaranteeing that this data will never be null. So this actually means popular artists may return a popular artist list or it may return null. Um, and unfortunately, the current state of our schema is that many fields are typed that way. And so we can't always properly leverage the type information there for safety. And it, when we wrote, wrote interfaces manually, this was also often uh, the case. We would not include those nullability specifiers, and we would just our code would assume that the thing could never be null. But as it stands, we cannot actually assume that metaphysics will not return null. So if we look at the the type that was emitted by um, by the relay compiler, it says that the popular artist field is going to return an object which is empty because our component doesn't actually use any more data or it's going to return null. What you then can do is, I think we already do that here because we copy pasted. it, yeah. So you can import the, from that file that gets generated by Relay Compiler, the, the typing, right? So you have a bit of, you have a loop. As you, as you create your uh, fragments, Relay Compiler will emit new typings, which you can then re-import into your file to make sure that how you're using it is actually the data that you are querying for. In this component, it just does very little, that's very little that's interesting. So let's just import the file for the, what shall we start? Let's start with the, let's start at, at the, the leaf. So let's start with the artist item component. If you open that one up, we're going to get rid of the, the props of the interfaces. Well, let's just empty the, the props interface. And we're going to delete the artist item data interface. <coughs> and as expected, now TypeScript will start complaining that <coughs> they're, they're, it doesn't know of any artist prop. Um, so what we will do is, first of all, import. Can we do that here? It might do it automatically for you if you just do it, right? Extends. Yeah, well, we're not good. Well, we just the name. Let's just, let's just. So we're going to import from the generated directory the, what file are we in? The artist item, artist graph, file. 
just leave out the .cs. And from there, if you if you control if you use control spacebar, it will start auto completing, and there shouldn't be much there. So it should just give you, yeah. The first item is the artist item artist. So that's the typing for it. Uh, if we go that, oh, well, we can hover. So this is this is this represents the data that we are importing, and as you can see, they can pretty much all be null. Um, and then we use it by saying, okay, so that we are going to have one artist prop, and that one is of type artist item artist. Do you need a from on the import? Oh, yep. Thank you. Okay, so having done that, TypeScript now knows what this uh, that we have this single prop. It's, it knows that name is going to be string or null, href is going to be string or null, image is going to be an object or null, and that object has a string or null, and bio is string or null. And so we, we get complaints here because, for instance, in this case, reading from the bottom, oh, type null is not assignable to type string. So image diff really wants this to be a string, never null. Um, which is good. I mean, if this was was truly the case, like an image, like an image could not have a URL in the, if that was a possibility, then this was uh, a good uh, safety guard. I am just going to paste in some dummy data. Is this a, yeah. Let's see. Okay. So. Here, we need to do jump through a few hoops to be safe about what about that data. So we check whether or not image is null, whether it has an, an object, and if it has, then we decide to pull out the URL from that image. And then finally, if that was if that all results in null, then we're just going to use this hard coded image, and then we pass that in. And now TypeScript is happy. We are providing a string. And the same applies to the href. Um, just going to copy as well. Okay. Let's see. So, what if we, for instance, normally you would probably be expanding as you're working on your component, you would be adding more and more. Um, but I'll show it by first removing a uh, fields. Let's say we did not uh, query for name yet. We save, gen regenerates those files, and because we're already importing the typing, we now get an error here saying like, "Hey, this thing you're using, it's not. You're not querying for it at all. It doesn't exist in the type." Um, so yeah, thank you, TypeScript. That's helpful. So we add it to our query, uh, save, and now everything is green again. Um, so this component is getting the data that it needs. Any questions about all of this? Okay. So, oh, I have a minor question. You started out with an interface, yeah. like a, a standard TypeScript interface, and then it got replaced by the one that was generated by the query. Yeah. When you're writing a new component, do you do it that way? Like you start a presentation, and then once you add in the types, I guess I'm just wondering, like, in terms of your workflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would probably start with. An empty interface prop, um, an empty render function, and uh, do do this ceremonial part, and then an empty fragment, and then um, looking at the comp, I might I might start out by doing like, okay, we need the name, we need the href, we need the image URL. Doing it this way is probably leads to a slightly nicer experience uh, when because. Now you can import the generated file, and then when you start writing the render uh, function, you'll get auto completions for the data that you'll that you're writing. Right. So now I can do uh, this. Uh, props. Um, I think it's set up on the list. What did I do? Uh, what did you do? Did I not say? You didn't extend your props. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. All right, so now I'll start getting, again, so 
So that's only an artist prop. And from the artist, what did I need? Oh yeah, I wanted the image. And then from the image, I want the URL. But oh, or it's complaining because it might be null. That, that's usually the flow I would use. So I would set up the skeleton and then the data that I actually definitely know is needed. And then import the generated file and then start typing out the render function. But you could do it anyway. Okay, so the popular artists um, component needs to follow the same pattern. You can delete this line, but because we're no longer importing uh, this interface from the artist item component, and we can get rid of this part, and let's import the actual emitted typing. So again, from the generated directory, in this case, the popular artist, little artist graph shell. And from there, we are going to fetch. Let's the name. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's best to do it in the order that the editor will start auto-completing it for you. But it is a convention, so you, could, you should always be able to. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And uh, this is the popular artist prop. So this is what it should look like. Okay, well, we're getting some redness. Let's see what that's about. So yeah, object is possibly null. Use an exclamation point. I don't think we've ever showed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you put a bang after popular artists. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously. All right. I thought that. I don't think so. I thought there's a way to do it. Type script. Yeah, there it looks. See, I told you. There you go. It does work in type script. Sweet. Uh, the program inside. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so what, what is it going to do at runtime? Is it going to throw? Yeah. Oh, this basically just means, uh, trust me, compiler, I know what I'm doing. Okay, so in the case of the metaphysics schema, you could probably use this because that's how you have been programming. <laughs> um, but if we want to at some point be able to trust the schema, then let's just pull this um, out of here. Okay, let's see, so it's about the artist, so we're going to define an artist uh, variable and we're going to uh, from the props, get the popular artists and then the artists. Okay, so now this variable could indeed be an array of um, objects or null. So let's make sure that it's always an array. Um, and now we are left with an array that could contain either an object or null. So we also want to get rid of those. Um, and for that, I am just going to, like at, at runtime basically, what we want to do is the resulting array, we're going to filter out anything that is um, that is not null. So it's, it's, it's like this. Um, but that does not, for the compiler, it doesn't really change things. That is just how the filter function has been typed. I'm sure that maybe Lodash has better typings that is able to infer that it can never be null again or what, just copy from the finished application. Let's see, where am this? Copy this not empty function. And we're gonna use that function instead of this little one, which makes it only ever be an array of objects. In terms of uh, checking for nulls and arrays and such, is that an option we added to TS config for a strict uh, null checking, or is that the default in TypeScript? Yeah, that's the default. If you if you add TypeScript to your project, the default is going to be that it's going to be strict about nulls. Um, what this is doing, just very quickly, um, is we're saying that the input of this function, the value is it's going to be, it's a union type, it's going to be either of type T or null or undefined, which is true. Uh, but the return value is always going to be only T. 
It's not going to be null, it's not going to be undefined. The actual runtime implementation is that we check here whether or not the value is null or undefined. But doing this, basically taking this union, right, taking this union and narrowing it down to just T means that now uh, TypeScript will know that the result of this filter is, is only going to be T, whatever T was, which in our case is an object. This, uh, in other languages, you would just use a flat map, like you map to yourself, and then it will remove your nil, nil values for you. Uh, but JavaScript and flat map is currently a fun, controversial topic today, and uh, so it's not happening yet. There you go, if you're looking for more heated debates. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use that a variable. Um, let's see now, so now we're, gonna, we're mapping and each artist is an object with only an ID, which we're using here. And then it's complaining here about a whole lot of stuff. Um, it's saying here, for instance, property name is missing in type uh, read only ID, uh, which is correct, right? To the compiler, currently, this, um, this object seems to only hold an ID, nothing else. But artist item has a, has a props interface that wants a whole bunch of data. And so the compiler is saying, like, you're not providing that data at all here. In TypeScript 2.8 was just released, which provides some um, possibilities that uh, we, the authors of the whole relay uh, TypeScript plugin are able to filter out that requirement. For now, what we're just going to do is we know better, compiler, we're going to say that artist is anything. You could probably put a bang in there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine. <nice. laughs> it might work, I'm no. not sure. Okay, no. it's just an answer. It just takes the null away. Yeah, bang on it. <laughs> As any. Uh, but this actually semantically makes sense, which I'll get to in a little bit. For now, we're just saying, sure, as any. Um, OK, so no more redness. So that's good. And then finally, let's go back to the root component, the app one. And just, let's see, you copy pasted that, so that should all be good. Is this red for anybody? Can you go over some of the changes now that we have more context? If you copy and paste it into app.tsx, but like... In the app, in the app component? Yeah. What is creating where? Well, as well, after this, once we go from this, I'll go through the entire, like, what did I go to get to the start and include that? Yeah, I can, I can at a high level, maybe say, like, the environment is basically where Relay is going to store all the... It has its, like, its runtime store where all the data will be denormalized into. Um, the environment also defines, we go to the implementation. Nope, we can't do that with the JavaScript file. Uh, let's see. It, so what it does, it, ha it creates a network uh, layer, uh, which uses a function that you provide yourself. And, and then it creates this store, and that's, that is the environment. Um, and this network layer, is up to us to, we just use the fetch function, we do the right headers to the right, to the right endpoint, um, we, uh, respond, we deal with the response in the way that we want to be dealing with it, uh, we're going to throw an error if there is any errors in the, in the resulting data. So this is our code that we need This is code, yeah, so Relay wants you to provide a network function where you do exactly what you want to be doing in terms of networking. Uh, let's see, what does it do else? Yeah, so we use the query renderer component of Relay, where the, so that's setting up the whole, the, end, the graph. Um, so we pass in the environment, we pass the root query, we pass in any variables if they are needed, like if this was an artist page, then we would probably provide an artist ID here. And then in the render prop, um, the render prop is going to, is, can be called in three different situations. Uh, once where data has an error object, meaning that the network, uh, network has failed. Uh, so then you can render a, a failure page. 
uh, it's going to be ren uh, rendered once with data being null, meaning the request has started, we are now loading. So that's, oh, sorry, props is, props is null. If props is null and error is null, then it's loading. So that's when we show loading. And if then finally it's rendered with props, then you can start rendering your whole tree. Right, so the query, the query is performed first. Once the data is in, then the rest of your React tree gets rendered. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that you really do not need to care about. Okay. Um, I see the error check. Yeah, because we're just very optimistic people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because benefit six is perfect. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Never likes memory. Okay, so we're gonna run yarn start again, and then let's see. It's, it's still showing the old page, and there it's re-rendered. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> but now let's take a quick look at the dev console. It might be you're in Chrome, so it might have different command lines. Uh, you can right click and do inspect. There we go. Let's see. So, if we take a look at the network, oh, well, we have to rerun it, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, you can see that it performs requests to metaphysics. First, it does a request for course, ignore that one. The second one is where um, the actual query is being performed. So if we take a look here at the query. So this is the query that, that we ended up performing. So you can see the exact uh, fragments that we defined. Um, they are both here and then they are used here in this, uh, this root query. And that ends up making uh, staging. Yeah. yeah, and so we get back all the data that is being used to render. Oh, it always see it like saves the last. <laughs> yeah, so we're now looking at a different a different query. <laughs> You get with not fully native apps. Uh, anyways, okay, um, yeah. So that's the query that we end up making, and then we get back a bunch of data, and then the React tree is rendered. Um, yes. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So some of the features of Relay. Um, when when you start out using Relay. You will vary. You are you are used to using your fetch function. You are used to having a blob of data come back, and you'll probably do console log data. <laughs> right. So let's do that. You know me so well. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what does uh, this dot props dot. Should we use a debugger? Is everybody aware? Like maybe we can use that this moment in time to yeah, also show the debugger. Okay, so the debugger, you go to the sources tab, uh, or you just use command P directly to find the file that we're looking for. In this case, we're going to look for the popular artists of TSX file. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe pull it out. Okay, so in the popular artist file, let's set a breakpoint on line 18. And then we are going to re render. Okay, so it hits that line. And then here. I'm going to inspect the props. Oh, beautiful. Um, so props is going to have popular artists. Okay, let's look at that. 
So popular artists is uh, an object that has one entry uh, artist, which is what we expect. And that is an array of 20 items, right? Okay, so far so good. So let's look in artists. Let's take like, a look at the first artist in that list. Right, so there's the ID, as you expect. But it doesn't hold any of the name, href, bio, image URL that you might be expecting. And that is one of the first things that will uh, be frustrating. Um, because why? So the reason it does that is if we take a look at, let's see, if we take a look ne next to each other, the popular artists and the artist item component. Well, we are not creating for you right now. Imagine that we're going to add, we actually do put it in here. Yeah, okay, so imagine that we really need to console log the, um, the ID. Right, so we're using the ID of an artist here and we are using the ID of an artist in this component. If the full query was being queried in one location outside of these components, like at the root, then you could get into a situation where, where you're not entirely sure, like if a component somewhere down the tree is also using the same field, you're just thinking of your component that we're writing here, like, oh, we decide we're not gonna use the ID as the key, we're just going to use, uh, I don't know, let's do uh, index. Right. So, okay, this is our new key. We no longer need the ID. We're going to remove it here. If, if the, the ID was being provided only because somewhere in a lower query, we were querying for the ID and we now ripped it out, then seemingly this, we don't even know about this component somewhere way down the tree. This component is now broken. The ID field is no longer being queried for at all by the lower level components. And so that's what then would happen, right? And so the point is that these components need, you need to be able to work on components in isolation. And what this feature is of Relay is called data masking. So what Relay does is for the child components, the data is opaque. So it does actually exist in this thing. It's, it's like somewhere here in this fragments, they, make, they go to large efforts to hide it all from you. Um, but it's opaque. The data is there, but it's opaque to the, the component that you are currently in because your component did not query for it. Um, it does not mean that if you query for ID in all your thousand components in the tree that it's going to have this massive blob of data over network that, created, that has ID in it a thousand times. It's only there once, but then relay a runtime when it comes in, it provides each component with only the data that it, that it actually requested. So that is one of the, the big features that is actually um, a feature that leads to uh, stable components uh, that you can easily compose without having to reason about the whole tree all the time. It's also the one that you'll most that you'll run into first when you're used to just having blobs of data. The yeah, clear a good thing? case for this is like uh, artwork bricks. Like uh, I think in. I think in the iOS app native, we do have one big query that grabs like sale artwork on the metadata, and that's just one big file. Um, anytime you make any changes to that, there's ramifications all over the app and trying to figure out what they are are things that we actually can't do at compile time. And it really is a case of you have to run all these screens to make sure that the things haven't broke. Like that would literally be impossible for this uh, structure. Yeah. Sometimes, just like with TypeScript, you know better or you really do need to inspect it. With Relay Modern, what you can do is like, hey, the data for this fragment, you can use a Relay-specific GraphQL directive and say like, do not mask this data. So we save this now and rerun the same query and look at the same data again. Oh, was it not compiled? Were you running the right at the Relay compiler? Am I trying to? I mean the wrong. Are you in like the start instead of the finish? I guess I am. Let's see. And the finish instead of the start. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So let's see. What was it? 
Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. So mask false. Save. Yes, we compiled. Okay. So now all the data is there for you to inspect to see if it's, if it's what you actually expect it to be. There, there will probably be uh, cases where you really do need to unmask because you want to have all of this data to pass it down to some function or what. Like, there's probably legit reasons to to use uh, uh, unmasked components in production, but it's definitely a very helpful tool that you should know about when you start out with this because you'll probably want to look at the data, but then remove it again. What is the what is the directive to unmask it? It's called relay and then mask false. That's a document about all the specific relay directives that exist, but the most useful one is this one, as far as I know. See what I know. Um, okay, let's see. So that's data masking. Um, Let me tell you. Yes. It's been an hour. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to be wrapping up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You. You start doing the, the slide now. Uh, the only real slide that I ended up coming up to towards the end of this is like, uh, so no need to put it up, is competitors. Um, a lot of a lot of the uh, whenever we talk to people that we use Relay, a lot of people ask, why don't we use Apollo? So Apollo is a very similar API client. Well, similar is not quite the right word. It's another like competitor in the same domain in terms of graph like GraphQL API clients that are great for JavaScript. Um, and like there's Relay comes at a, a, a tooling complexity cost that a lot of people aren't really willing to jump straight into. Apollo is a library that gives a lot of um, that is much shallower and easier to get started with that you can build things still quite quickly. You'll get a lot of the features that we just showed there, but you won't get all of them. Things like data masking won't be available. The automatic type inferences per component wouldn't be available, but you could get that for your entire schema. Um, and so you, it's a really great library that provides a lot less uh, complexity in the sense of uh, you don't necessarily have to know as much to get started. And that's generally considered a much better like, starting point for most people in the JavaScript ecosystem because they're generally used to like, composing lots of small things to get where you to develop your application. This relay is a little bit more, it's a little bit bigger. Like that starting library uh, like took, it took maybe half an hour to an hour to just go from the exact version that we had previous to the current. Uh, where, where you all started, um, which was, you know, adding a few dependencies and setting up things like the, the environment configs um, and then just getting the GraphQL uh, schemas down into the folder. Are those sort of things that generally people like are not entirely sure whether they want to be investing in Relay or in Apollo. Usually that kind of process usually puts people off. Um, but I consider it completely worth it. Yeah, I would add like when somebody asked me like why did you choose Relay over Apollo, the first thing I would say is like well Apollo did not exist, <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good reason. Um, and when we, I mean, we did seriously consider it. We yeah. talked, we spoke to the, the Apollo authors. We spoke to many large companies using it. And what I hear from users most often is that they end up basically rebuilding Relay on top of Apollo. But the core remains in Apollo, which is when Apollo does everything at runtime because it tries to be like very iterative. Um, and you can never get rid of that again. So the performance issues go a little bit away. I think I would advise people if, they, if they're just trying stuff out or they're making projects that are simpler and more short lived, then Apollo seems a good uh, choice. But if you want to have an application that's is going to remain needs to remain stable many people need to work and on board onto then having all that tooling and having things like compile time safety especially for our mobile app again because you know we really really want some more safety than just uh, plain uh, uh, javascript then that is that is why it's worth it to us yeah um yeah so definitely tooling complexity 
the opposite, the, uh, the other side of that coin, obviously, is that we now have multiple people that know how to do that. Also, another big thing is that Apollo is a company that has, provides products to developers. So they have a they have an incentive to make everything easier to, to for you to onboard until there's way more documentation. There's a community, an open source community, and they accept patches uh, very easily. Whereas Relay is less like Facebook is like sure, okay, you may tick the public box on your uh, Relay repository, but it's our thing. Uh, it needs to work well for us, and everybody else should just figure it out, um, which is a completely different perspective. Uh, on how to approach open source, a very legitimate one in my perspective. But it does mean that, for instance, like especially the community and documentation, those kind of things are things that we're really lacking. So starting this year, a bunch of us uh, Relay users in the open source community have started to try to bootstrap them a bit more. Yep. For some reason, all these people are in New York. Yeah. So that's first dips. Yep, first dips. Um, there's, uh, Called the NAS now. Called the NAS, yeah, they're, they're, they're using our entire stack. Yeah, and uh, a few more. It's a game company. Um, okay, so let's see. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Get myself no, no slice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have no JavaScript as borrow, uh, but we'll have two on Friday. So. That'll be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see y'all. <laughs>